My name is Dennis Allen. With me today is Debbie Gordon Rubin Hi. and Roy Goose. Welcome. Debbie and I are here today as students of Inivialuktan. Roy will be our instructor. In our area, we have two predominant dialects, Umarmut and Siglit. In our last show, Leonard Harry taught us common Umarmut words. We will review them today. Then Roy will give us an introduction to the Siglit dialect. Okay, Roy, to uh, review the words that we learned the last time. Aglan, what is that word? Aglan is but, however, and it's a transitional word to join two different subject matters together. Yeah, two different thoughts. Okay, could you give me a, an example, like how you would use it? An example would be, uh, how's your equipment today? Your uh, outboard motors, uh, and then uh, switching over to uh, your personal being and the things that you're going to bring along on your trip. So somebody would say, out down now of it, because you're going to travel. How is your equipment? Uh, how is your engines? And you would say, um, they're fine, they're great, but we're a little short on this stuff. So I would say, in that situation where I use that but, I would say, Aglan, Niki Haglongit to me. Okay. I don't have very much consumables on board. Okay. Not too I much see. food because of the fact that it's heavy. Mm. How would you use the word Amunin? Amunin in the Siglak language, in the Siglak dialect, means you're welcome. That's usually an answer to uh, receiving something from someone mm -hmm. and that means um, don't mention it mm -hmm. or thank you very much okay uva that does that mean here uva is um, a word that's used uh, when someone is looking for something if you ask me where's my cup and i grab the cup and i say uva here it is okay davra Dabra in the Umagmir language means there it is or here it is. Okay. Does Uvanga mean that I'm talking about myself? About yes, it's a, it's a referral to your person. It, it is a pronoun. It's a name for yourself. Without using your name, Debbie, you say Uvanga, mm -hmm. myself. Me. How about talking about the two of us? We would, we would use, we would tack on a little um, suffix to it. And that suffix would mean uvaguk. Uvaguk, meaning two of us? Both of us. What about um, all of us here? Collectively speaking, we would say uvagut. So two, the both of us would be uvaguk. Right. And the all of us here would be uvagut with That's a T. That's right. Uvagok and Uvagot. Yes. Uvagot, both of us, two people. Uvagok, more than two, three people, or a large three people or four people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Huli. Huli, nothing's happened yet. Um, it's. It's nothing, nothing's happened yet. Yeah. So, like, you're out hunting, but nothing's happening. Right. Okay. Um, if we were out in the land and somebody says, Did you get any geese today? And your answer would be, Suli, mm. meaning nothing. Okay. No actions taken place. You didn't get the animals that you wanted to feed yourself with. Suli. What about the word uvaniptau? Uvaniptau, the root word uvani, meaning here. Mm -hmm. Uvaniptau, meaning that there are more than one place that these two objects are situated. Um, if you ask me where is the pen, I'd say uvva, mm -hmm. talva, which meaning there it yeah. is. Uh -huh. And I would say, oh, yes, Uvaniptau, also over here. Okay. Mm, okay. Okay, Mani. 
Mani is referring to a geographical location where you're at or a specific position in the house or in our sitting, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, Mani would refer to a specific location. All three of us are sitting on this set here. Mm -hmm. And in respect to speaking about the set, I would say Mani, right here in the present tense. Could you use it in like a sentence? Somebody says, um, an individual may come up to me and says, where are you? Over the telephone, I would say, Manitu, which means I am here. Iliani. Refers to a non-specific, unclear point sometime in the future. Ilani. Yeah. So if I was going to ask you, um, when do you plan to move? Then that's, that's how you would reply? And I would, I would reply, Ilani, which means there is no definite plan or no definite point in time that is identified. But you know it's in the future, in a very not too distant future. Mm -hmm. What about the word unaptau? Una referring to this. Unaptau meaning also and also this, or this could be included. Okay. Included in this is this. Okay. Right? Um, Davrani. Davrani is Dav there. There it is, in that, in that specific place. Okay. When you hear a lot of words spoken, you hear a lot, the elders or people that speak the language every day use lo, 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 like Dennis lo. Debilo, Roy Lo, or Aklavig, Aklavig Lo, Inubig Lo. What does Lo mean? Lo means that it is included. And in the English language, it could be translated as saying and. Okay. Uh, what about Inubing Me? Inubing Me. Oh. In Inubic. In the suffix Me means in Inubic. Okay or at Inubik. Mm -hmm. What about min, Inubing min? Inubing min, the word min uh, refers to from, from Inubik, Inubing min. So somebody says, Nakit Kaivit, where did you come from? And you would, and your reply would be, Inubing min, Kaiyung, mm. I come from Inubik, min. From. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, what about Inuving Mun? M U N. Now, let's take for instance, if you're traveling from a clavic to an undisclosed location, and an elder would come up to you and say, Where are you going, Debbie? Where are you going, Dennis? And you would say, Inuving Mun. Oh, yeah, to Inuvik. To Inuvik. Okay. Now you've explained what your specific location is going okay. to be. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, those are the words that we went through the last time with Leonard Harry, and now let's go into the Siglic dialect. Okay, now an introduction. If I was to meet you on the street, how would you greet me? My first word to you would be Akana. Mm. And that's a form of a greeting, which means deep down inside, peace to you or greetings from my household to yours. Okay. Or in common everyday language, hey there buddy, how are you? Oh yeah, and what would be my reply? Your reply would be to say exactly what I've said to you. Is that common courtesy? I say ahana to you, and you say ahana to me. Okay, okay, I see. Okay, now, you and Debbie, you're the elder, and you see Debbie for the first time, how would you go about conversing with her? In order to uh, begin the conversation, first of all, we have to set things straight. 
Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the introduction is, I would say, Ahana. And she would say, Ahana. Ahana. Return that favor to me, and I return that greeting to her. Mm -hmm. And then we'd, I, I would say, Debbie, I, first of all, I wouldn't know her name. I would mm -hmm. say, Kine Ilvit, which means, who are you? And I would reply, Ubanga Atiga Debbie. Yes. Which means? My name is Debbie. And okay. so therefore, <clears throat> the introduction is, now I found out and discovered that your name is Debbie. And I would say, Debbie, Debbie, which means, Debbie, how are you? How is your life? How's things today? Mm -hmm. And I would reply, Nakurunga. That's right. Nakurunga is very, very specific. And because of a specific question. Nakurunga means, I'm fine. I'm great. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were talking before. Nagurunga is kind of specific to the delta, eh? to right. Umangmut. Right. Naguyo, Naguyunga is, is would be the siglic. Yes, is siglic. Uh, we drop the R. Yeah. And we put, we, we replace, replace it, it with a with a Y or a double J. Nakuyunga. Okay. Okay. Now you want to know where Debbie is from. So how do you ask her that? But just one moment. How do I know what's his name? Well, he's the elder. Okay. But shouldn't I know his name? That's that's for sure. Okay. You're so right how there. do I ask? What is your name? Kina Ilvit. Kina Ilvit. Kina, meaning who? Ilvit, meaning you. Okay. Kina Ilvit. Ubanga, Roy mm -hmm. I am Roy. And oh. would I reply the same way as you? How how are you? Yes. Know it bit? Yes, yes. I know it bit. To start the conversation mm -hmm. off. Yeah. To know that we're both on the same mental plane. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I it bit. I know it bit. Uvanga nakuyuma. So you are fine too. I'm I'm just great. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> now uh you want to know where Debbie is from. How would you ask her where she is from? Nakin Nakpit. Nakin Nakpit. Nakin Nakpit. Nakin. Where? Nakin Nakpit. Where are you from? And how would I say, I am from Aklavik, but I live in Inubik now? Uwanga. I. Aklavik Mutao Yunga. I am from a clavic. So, uvanga a clavic mu taoyunga? Right. Uvanga a clavic mu taoyunga. And you put another transitional word in there. Kisiani. Kisiani. Kisiani means however, or, but. Inubik mitunga. Inubik mitunga. Meaning? I live in Inubik. Now. However, I live in Inubik. Kisiani? Kisiani. Inubik Mittunga. Kisiani Inubik Mittunga. Right. Now, now that's, that's how you say that I am from Aklavik. Aklavik is my hometown where I grew up, where my parents are. However, I now live in Inubik and call Inubik my home. All okay. of that in, <clears throat> in that short, those few short words. In those three words. Yeah, huh. that's a uh, pretty um, exact. Eh? The words it are really is, exact. It is very precise. Yeah. In a world of turn, the language is designed around the cold weather, so we have no time to beat around the bush. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. <laughs> it's very precise. Yeah. Okay. Now you want to know what she's doing here. Say, for example, you were, you, the two of you were in your hometown, right. and maybe she had a camera with her or something, and you want to know what she's doing here. How would you ask her that? Suliakpit. Suliakpit. It comes from the word, root word of suli. Suliak. What are you doing? What did you come here for? Suliakpit. 
sous l'air. Mm -hmm. And you can't learn would, the language. I would reply, uh, I'm here to work, maybe. Okay. Okay. Uh, your reply would be, Savagyaktunga. Savagyaktunga. Right. Savagyaktunga. Comes from the root word of savak, meaning to do things, to work. Mm -hmm. To work. Savagyaktunga, meaning I come to work. Savagyaktunga. Okay. And the suffix of tunga is always referring to yourself as a pronoun. That is the pronoun. Yeah. Tunga. I am. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I hear um, between the uh, Umang and Siglik dialect, the S's and the H's are switching around here. How does that work now? With the Umang uh the, H's, the H sound is very predominant. Um, and that's the correct form of speaking the language. Mm -hmm. With the Siglik, uh, the S sound is very predominant. Yeah. They replaced the H with the S? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, while we're still on, while we're on that topic, what is the big difference between the two dialects, between Siglik and Umang? Mostly, is there much? mostly it, is, um, it is the accent uh -huh. of the words itself. The accent, the pronunciation of words, but a lot of words are identical. I would say greater than 90% of the words are identical. The only thing is, we both say them in different manners. Like, um, like the Englishman, for example. The English has an accent. Um, mm -hmm. And when you speak Canadian, we have an accent. Um, so those different sounds are replaced by different sounds to mean the same word. The meaning is still there, but the, the sounds are, are different. Oh, yeah. Like the H sounds. Uh -huh. And the R and Y that we were talking about before. Yes. Uh, the R sound is very predominant in, uh, in the Umbang Miut. And we drop the R and replace it with Y. Mm -hmm. The Y sound. Right. Like oh. um, Suliyunga or Huliyunga. Mm -hmm. So going back to the, the word we learned with Leonard, Huli, so you would pronounce that Suli? Suli. Okay. So any word, any word with H in it, if you just switch that over to an S, then you'd be talking in the Siglic dialect. That's, that's pretty well. Sure. Okay. Um, now getting back to our conversation, you know her name and where she's from and what she's doing here, but you really don't know where she, who her parents are, you know, because you're the elder, chances are you would know her parents, right? Right. So how would you ask her to identify herself or, or who her parents were? So in terms of uh, finding out if we are related mm -hmm. somehow, mm -hmm. uh, I would say, Amamadlu, Aparlu. Amamadlu, Aparlu. Your mother and your father, Kinawa, Kitkuk. 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 What does that who, Kitkuk? Who are they? Kitkuk. Who are your parents? And, and I, I would reply, my parents are Danny and Annie C. Gordon. Okay. And how would I say that? You would say, Amamaga. Amamaga. Meaning, my mother, mm -hmm. Annie C. Gordon. Amamaga and C. Gordon. Amamaga and C. Gordon. Atatara, Danny C. Gordon? Apaga. Apaga. Danny C. Gordon. Apaga. Danny C. Gordon. And I would say, and I would say, eh, Sunabwa. Eh, meaning, yes, I agree with you. Sunabwa, meaning, I now realize. These oh, are yeah. parents. Okay. Mm. Okay, now um, let's get into to, uh, identifying, identifying people. Um, how would you say a man, a single man, 
in Siglik? If you have made that distinction already, that this individual indeed is a man, mm -hmm. we would say Angun. 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 But in the distance, where you can't make the distinction between a man or a woman, you would say Inuk. Inuk, Inuk. oh yeah, okay. Meaning person? Person. That person? Human being. Mm -hmm. hmm. As they come closer to you, you begin to see their features and you mm -hmm. discover ah, he's, a, he's a man and say, mm. ah, Angun. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, what if there were two of them? Two of them coming in. <coughs> you couldn't, you couldn't distinct. If there were two of them coming and there was a man and a woman, mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's just say for argument's sake, yeah. um, a man and his daughter. Okay. Let's say they're walking this way. I would say, Angudlu, Angnagmo. And this is before we discover that these two persons are a father and a daughter team. We didn't know it was a daughter, so we, we called her Angnag, which means the female. Oh, yeah. Angnag. So okay. as they come closer yet, we find that there is an age difference. Uh -huh. And we. As they come close to me, the first form of greeting would be Akana. I know it, but Akana. My greetings to you. How are you? And he would return the same thing to me, Akana. Uh -huh. And like we started. Nakuyung, he would say. Nakuyung. If he's doing fine. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And then he would introduce himself, and he would introduce his partner. Okay. And how would he do that? How would he introduce himself and the person that's with him? Let's, let's say for argument's sake, his name is John. Uvanga Atera John. Uba Uvanga Atera John. My name is John. Uba, here is Paniga, my daughter, Donna. Okay. So that's, that's how they would introduce themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, what, maybe let's go back to, uh, to uh, see if Debbie remembers what you just taught her. So the scenario is you're the elder and in your hometown, and she's a new person in your town. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. see her. Now, let's see if you could converse beginning with with uh, your greeting to her. Akana. Akana. Kano it pit. Nakurunga. Kina ilvit. Uvanga atiga debi. Kina ilvit. Uvanga uruing uyunga. Now, Akana, how are you? That greeting has been exchanged. Mm -hmm. Formalities have, have been set. What is your name? Who are you? My name is such and such. Mm -hmm. What is your name? My name is Roy. Nakinyakpit. Where are you from? Ubanga. Ubanga. A clawing mu taoyuma. A clawing mu taoyuma. Kisiani. Kisiani. Inuving mitum. In Uving Mittuma. I am from a Klavik, but or however I live in a new Okay. So from there you'd ask her, what is she doing here? Suliakpit Maunga. Suliakpit. Suliakpit Maunga. What did you come here for? And I came here to work. Having You Which don't have is? to say you don't have to say where else. Savagyaktunga means I came I, I came to work. To work. Oh, okay. Okay, now you wanna know her uh, 
parents? Remember, you wanted to know who her parents were? Yeah. So in case we were related. Yeah. That's right. Or, in yeah. case we were related or in case our parents were friends, mm -hmm. this way we are most certainly going to be friends. Mm -hmm. So I would say, Aparlo, Amamalo, Kinawa. Apan, your father, Amamadlo, and your mother, Kinaw, who are they? So I would say Amamanga, Annie C. Gordon, Apapala, Annie C. Gordon? That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Okay, uh, we have to wrap it up right now, so maybe the next time we come back we could go over, go over these words again and uh, reinforce them with the audience and uh, we'll just see you all next time I guess and thanks for coming here today Roy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing that a lot of people like to get into is high lines and I want to really caution you about high lines. Uh, for example, you Join us in the coming box. weeks as we spend more time and with Wayne Mary of Context North on search and, and rescue training. What uh, seems like a real nice dramatic idea, you know, is to here's your gorge like this, or to string a rope across here, let's say you're three on this side, you string a rope across and you just haul the victim across on the rope, right? And put a pulley around there and, and hook the stretcher underneath the pulley and two ropes and just slide them across. Ought to work like a dam. Here's one thing you want to remember. When you got a load in the middle of a rope like this, here's the load pulling down. The tighter that rope is, the greater that load is. Okay. If you got, say, 20 degrees here between the points, you haven't got any kind of a problem. That's your load. Uh, because you got a fairly equal amount on both ropes, just about half the weight of the, the subject on both ropes. But as this angle approaches the horizontal, the load approaches infinity. It just multiplies dramatically as it goes up. And a matter of fact, it's theoretically impossible to keep that rope perfectly straight across there, no matter how hard you tighten it. And you put a load in the middle of it, it'll break. I don't care how big a tougher rope it is. So there's got to be some sag, and you've got to have at least 20 degrees to be safe. Okay. Now, don't, don't forget that not only is the load on the rope tremendous, but the load on each anchor here is also tremendous. As, as the rope gets tighter. So be so real that, cautious with high lines. Would that in the middle there double it if you're just straight across? If you don't have that 20% you need to re-angle? Would it double? Will it double, you mean? Double, uh, well, more than double. Triple? triple and quadruple and it'll keep right on going up till you can't believe the strain on it. So when you see these guys that's crossing creeks like something's going over, they would have that. You better have some sagging in it or you're going to have some real strain on that rope. Yeah. And uh, you see the steel cable crossings, you know, the little cable cars on.